Okay, can I just say I cannot take you seriously with those headphones? Stop. It was either these you, ones or the ones that hurt really bad. There's a band, and then there's another band, and it looks like you have like a halo floating on the top of your Baby, head. Baby, that is my halo. Halo. You can't take that away from me. Um, can we just talk about? I think we should start. We should start each uh, episode with a segment called "Can we just talk about?" Because I was listening to like our previous ones, and every time I'm like, you know what? Can we just can we talk, just talk about, about? Um, on this segment of "Can we just talk about?" with Jonathan no, real, Carson. Can we just really quick talk about? Sarah just turned twenty five. Happy birthday, Sarah! Wow, Thank you. you are almost over that hill. Yeah, that ha, rough, ha. don't tell people how old I am. Hill. Yes, rough, bumpy life. So, really quick, can we just talk about how Sarah wanted me to take some pictures for her birthday with <laughs> balloons? These pictures. Um, and the balloons were the you know she's turned twenty five, so the big two balloon and the big five balloon, and they were going to be silver. So, of course, um, basically a mirror, very reflective. Um, <laughs> so I'm in I'm in the store getting everything for her she's sending me pictures of inspiration and she sent me three girls who did photo shoots for their birthdays each of them were turning 24 (laughs) so i consciously know how old she's turning but when i'm buying the balloons i buy 24 24 what is that one 21 (laughs) i bought the numbers two and four so don't we uh don't we head on back to sarah's house i realize my mistake and i feel awful because now all the party cities are closed no it's so funny he gets out of his car and i'm like yes this is so great finally got the balloons and i was like did you get 24 and then he realized the error of his way no he felt really bad and i hated that i did feel really bad because i just wanted to make it special for you you really wanted the pictures and i wanted them to come out nice okay it well was this special these this pictures came out bomb awesome but this is just the beginning of the story because then <laughs> i bring them in the house she's upstairs getting ready she comes on downstairs and the balloons are floating on the ceiling we have the two balloon and the four balloon and um, I was like, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to, we're going to figure this out. We're going to, you're going to hold the two balloon and I'm going to Photoshop the five, right? So don't we flip on a light switch, the ceiling fan turns on and it sucks in both the balloons and it pops the two, not the four. Yes. The only balloon we, <laughs> we needed. needed. <laughs> so um, he has to uh, breathe in this balloon in the hole to um, inflate oh, it. Oh yeah, it popped. So I had to like push my breath through it. Now it had no helium in it. Right, so then we taped it, and then the two wouldn't, um, it wouldn't float anymore. So it was a great start to 25. Did you have a good birthday? I had a crazy birthday. In a good way? I was not good. Oh, no. In a good way, but it was crazy. Hi, Mrs. Sarah's mom. I know you're listening. Shout out to uh, John Bailey for uh, celebrating his birthday with me. And Colleen. And always Colleen for birthing me. Yes. So that was 24. Um, but I just recently went to New Orleans. Woo-woo! For yes. anybody who listens to us from New Orleans, hi there. He I was in you. Visited the um, American Story yeah. Coven House. American like Horror the Story. True yes, witch, I did. I so I been. went on a murder tour, and our tour guide was uh, she's gonna listen. Her name is Tori. Hey, hey, Tori. Oh my hi, god! Tori. I just, wait, I just realized she gives tours, and her name is Tori. Tori. <gasps> That's like if you're a bill collector and your name is Bill. Or if you're oh. like in OBGYN and your name's like chlamydia. I don't know. It sounded like a pretty e. name. <laughs> I'll die right um, now. Yeah, New Orleans was fun. Uh, they have some pretty uh, messed up murders that happened there, uh, especially uh, like recently, as of late, like 2003, there was a messed up one. But, um, and usually I don't mind flying. But for some reason, I just needed like a vodka and Klonopin smoothie to get me through that first flight. Like I was, I was fine, but I made the, <laughs> I made the mistake of at nine thirty in the morning I had um, airport Chinese food. <gasps> Zero out of ten would not recommend. Yikes! Was was your asshole on fire? No, it wasn't. It was like I, I was just so bloated. I only ate half of it, and I was just so bloated. And then when the plane took off, and we were like oh, way up there in the good. altitude, my stomach was so bloated. And then I remembered on this episode of A Thousand Ways to Die, this woman, her breast implant exploded, and I was like, oh my god, my breast implant's gonna explode. <laughs> and that's what I felt like. And we just kept going higher. I was like, hey, can we just like bring the plane down just like a little bit? Like I'm not feeling one. too. Ha. Good. 
too hot. <laughs> and it also didn't help that someone behind me was blasting farts into their seat like a damn bourbon Ew, street. A lot of people do that. It's probably, they probably have the tinies too. Oh, listen, we have a limited amount of air supply when you're on an airplane. Chinese food at 9 a.m. I'll die right now. 30. Give me die. that 30 minute. 9.30 a.m. I'll die right now. Yeah. Well, there was nothing vegetarian I could eat there. Oh, that's true. But yeah, I went. I saw the Coven House. Um, the real one that they filmed at. Somebody actually lives there. Uh, I saw the LaLaurie House where that crazy racist serial killer bitch lives. I went to Marie Laveau's um, Love shop. Love her. Yes. And it's actually still run by her family members. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I got some voodoo dolls and Florida water and some other items. So please don't mess with me. Me. <laughs> but hi. Welcome to Esoteric Oddities. <laughs> welcome, guys. Welcome back. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Sarah. Okay. I'm literally drinking more than you. What is life? Ball is life. No, ho is life. This is very true. Um, um I was going to ask her a question, but she's busy sipping. And I respect that. What's up? With the what's up? <laughs> what is our topic today? Uh, we are covering UFOs, alien, alien abductions. We are here. We we're, are riveting. We are we're thriving. Amazing. <laughs> We are living in the moment. Extraterrestrials, right? Yes, here we are. She picks this topic, and I'm V excited about it. I did. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Extraterrestrials are crazy, aren't they? People have been saying... <laughs> Wait, I, I just want to... Really quick, I just want to say that people who have listened to this and their comments have been like, you should edit out the silences that you guys have, but most of it is just us, like, drinking our wine really or is. our champagne. Yeah. Right. It really is. It's never us being like, uh, what do we say it's, now? It's it really just us. sounds like an awkward silence because we're both, like, trying to get through our early 20s in the year 2017 and the world is crumbling. Yeah, but, literally crumbling But right we, now. we try to have a smile on our face. There it is again. There's that. Again. <laughs> um, so extraterrestrials. Did you ever see War of the Worlds? No, I. Okay, so I've only seen the fourth kind. That's like the only like alien. Oh, and that one movie, Signs. But I think it was like a funny movie. Those are the only alien movies you've seen. You've seen ET. Yeah. Okay, ET was an alien movie. If you hear that, it's the the turtles behind. Oh, me. I was like, what's popping? Whoop. Was popping. What's poppin'? So War of the Worlds. Um, I forget what year the original movie came out, but it was a book first. Um, it's always a book first. And then it became a radio play in 1930, right? I'm not sure like exactly what year, but back in 1930, War of the Worlds is basically like aliens came to Earth and just kind of like you know did what aliens did and just kind of wiped out the entire existence of humans, which you know we're kind of overdue for that. But, yeah. What? Know. Like, what are you waiting for? What, what are, are you waiting for? for? <laughs> Oh my god, it comes full circle. <laughs> but so Orson Welles and a group of his um actor friends actually went on the radio and they they like pretended that they're so they played music, right? It was like classical music. It sounded like a song on a radio station and they interrupted and they were like we're reporting explosions on Mars and something's coming towards Earth, but they like didn't make it sound super urgent. And then they went back to the music and then they interrupted the music again. And they were like, we interrupt again. And it was like a frantic message about how aliens are coming. They had like sound effects in the background. And apparently like people fled from their cars in a panic. And I would people, too. Oh my gosh. Like I remember hearing the story my dad told me when I was younger. And like, like there were reports of suicides in the mix. But honestly, it's all a bunch of mama jumbo. Because I mean, there was only, I, I looked it up and they ran a report and there was only 2% of radio listeners who were listening to that station at the time. So 2%? Well, only 2% of people who were listening to the radio were listening to that station where that fake report was coming from. But I did listen to the fake report and it sounds kind of real, especially for like at the time when people weren't used to being trolled. The shirt is hurting me, so I'm taking it off. That's okay. Again, that's why we're a podcast and <laughs> we would have to be rated X in here. You just gave people all that visual. All that visual. Um, <laughs> but if you like, I I feel like I've tried to talk to a lot of people who I thought would be like more open to the idea of like extraterrestrial yeah, beings. Yeah, they're all like, no. Yeah, they're like, get out your tinfoil hat. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to get out my tinfoil hat because it makes my thighs look bigger than they are. And it takes the attention away from my ass, which I've worked really hard on. <laughs> all those Whopper Juniors. Just kidding. I'm a vegetarian. Um <laughs> 
but but I seriously I believe in extraterrestrials. Honestly, if you don't believe in you, well, not UFOs because that's just an unidentified. Click off, Barbara. Click off, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> We're not coming at you, Mom. I promise. But um, come on, the universe is so huge. There's literally hundreds of people in the world. It's like a really big billions, place. babe. Literally, so many people. Like, there's no way we're the only people like, out here, though. When one person walks out of your life, five people will walk back in. So, like, don't fret. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Advice from Dun-dun-dun-dun. Kara. Thank you, Doctor Phil. You're welcome. <laughs> what? It just sounded like advice from Doctor Phil. It was inspiring. Thank you. Yeah, Doctor Phil brought on that one girl. What's her name? Catch me outside. How about that? Let's let's keep that off our podcast. Oh, you can edit that out. I'm not gonna edit that out because we keep it raw. We keep it real. Except, like, wrap it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, I think it's my turn, right? Yes. Yeah, you start. All right. So, uh, my story is the abduction of Amy Rylance. So it's uh, October 4th, 2001 in a small town in Queensland, Australia called Gundaya. I'm probably saying that wrong. So Keith Rylance and his wife, uh, Amy Rylance, and the roommate Petra Heller were watching TV in the living room area of their trailer home. At 9.30 p.m., Keith called it a night and retired to his bed. Uh, Shortly after, Petra said goodnight and headed to her own room while Amy fell asleep on the couch. At approximately 11.15 p.m., Petra was awoken by a bright beam of light. She got out of bed and peeked through her door into the living room. There, she saw Amy unconscious and levitating inside the beam, inside a beam, heading out the window head first in her horizontal sleeping position. Also within the beam were a few of the uh, items that were on the coffee table in front of her. In a panic, Petra looked outside to see a large disc-shaped object hovering low to the ground. Okay, really quick. Whether you believe this part or not, it's up to you. I was reading it and I was like, what is happening? I'm not going to throw it out the window. But, like, just stick with me because the facts come, the police come in, and shit gets weird. Okay? Okay. Uh, So she began screaming for Keith. He ran out into the living room to see what was going on. By that time, Amy was gone and the window was open. The curtains were torn. Items from the coffee table were on the floor beneath the window and Amy was nowhere in sight. Also, sometimes that silence is both of us suppressing a burp. <laughs> because it's like, that's what that one was. Oh, I was waiting for Yeah, I just the... don't want to be rude. I don't want to just burp right in. Burp right in there. I don't want to do that. Or raw, right? Yeah, that's true. If one sneaks out, I apologize in advance. Um, All right. So Petra was confused and frantic, making no sense. Um, And it was only worrying Keith more. And he was freaking out. He's like, yo, where's Amy? What's happening? Why is there ripping the curtain? He originally had thought that somebody broke in or something like that. Um, Finally, she calmed down enough to tell him what she saw. So the roommates ran outside to find that the bush near the window was burnt. And Amy was still nowhere to be found. And um, there's actually pictures of this. And uh, a news van when they took a camera crew to her house, obviously. And um, you can see the burnt bush. Very biblical. Loves it. So Keith called the police around 9 f- or 11.40 p.m. to report that his wife had been abducted. About an hour and a half after the initial call, Senor Constable Robert Marag- Maragna... Sounds about right. Um, And an officer from another township arrived at the site. Initially, the police believed that they might be walking into a situation involving foul play, even perhaps murder. But the situation they walked into was far more bizarre than they could ever have imagined. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, there's a true story. Don't laugh at me. What is that? I need you to refill it. Oh, it's on the floor. It's under there. Um, so Keith and Petra tried to stay calm and tell the police that Amy Rylance had been abducted by what Petra claimed was a, quote, spaceship, but the officers were struggling to keep an open mind, so they called additional officers to the scene. So while police were taking notes and reporting the incident, the phone from inside the trailer rang, and the night was about to take yet another 
unexpected twist. So Keith answered the phone, and it was a woman indicating that she had found Amy distressed and severely dehydrated, covered in mud at a BP gas station. That is the sound of a good time. Um, so uh, Amy looked and felt as if she had not eaten for days. And if that wasn't strange enough, the woman was calling from the city of McKay, which was 490 miles away from Amy's home. Unable to speak, Keith handed the phone to the constable, and the police struggled to figure out how Amy had last been seen at her home at 11.15 p.m., just 35 minutes before the police were called, and then traveled almost uh, 500 miles away which would have taken eight to nine hours on the fastest route. But. There's no but. Oh, were you trying to fill in the but? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that's, they were, so she was reported being seen. Petra saw her at 11.15. Cops came. 35 minutes later, she's 500 miles away. I'm sick. Which is eight to nine hours on the fastest route. All right, things get weirder. So the McKay police, which is um, where Amy is at the BP gas station, um, they were called and brought into the case. Uh, as Amy came to, a statement was notarized by the McKay police with a Justice Act acknowledgement, which required Amy to acknowledge that everything she was stating was true to the best of her knowledge and belief and um, that if it is admitted as evidence, she's liable for prosecution if she indicated anything in her statement that was false. So basically, she was under oath. Like, she she was telling the truth, and they were going to bring it to court if they needed to. I mean, I don't know what to do in this situation. Are you going to arrest some aliens? Because uh, I'm going to just... They're going to zip, zip, zop out right. of here. So uh, her statement indicated that she last only recollected laying on the couch at her home. Uh, she had no recollections of the events that Petra described because she was unconscious. So she doesn't remember floating out the window um, and all that stuff. But she does remember waking up on a bench in a strange rectangular room alone. She said illumination came from the walls and ceilings as if they themselves were lighting the room. She indicated that she called out and heard what seemed to be a strange male voice asking her to be calm and assuring her that everything was going to be all right. She would not be harmed. Soon an opening appeared in the wall, and what she described as, quote, a guy about six feet tall walked in the room. The man appeared to be slender in build, uh, but in perfect proportion, covered from head to foot in a full body suit, and what looked like a black mask covering his face with holes for the eyes, nose, and mouth. Amy felt strangely calm and spacey, and she believed that she had been in that place for a while. Um, she then indicates she found herself lying on a bed in the room, falling asleep. The next thing she recollects is when she woke up on the ground with trees around her. She felt extremely disoriented and for some reason could smell the ocean. And indicated she was not sure how long she tumbled through the brushland. Uh, seemingly, it was for a long time. But she made her way to the highway, saw a light from the BP gas station. So she walked into the BP gas station where staff saw her in her state and tried to give her some assistance. Uh, she accepted water since she was feeling severely dehydrated. Uh, and initially she was unable to answer any questions uh, and she didn't know where she was. The store clerk asked if she had been drinking or was on drugs, to which Amy replied no. She felt tired, sore, drained, and lethargic. Uh, so a woman who was in the store at the time took uh, her and her friend took Amy to the hospital and that's when they contacted Keith. So um, that's bless you. Were you sneezing? I was. Okay. I didn't want to mess up here. That's all right. Store E. -E. Um, so the woman then went to the McKay police station uh, with Amy and Amy gave her statement of the events and the woman explained her side of when she found amy um so amy also indicated that this sort of thing had never happened before which you know hasn't happened to me either uh but she said when she was a child in the fifth grade she did see a large ufo in the sky surrounded by smaller objects spooky 
the police arranged to put Amy in a motel pending the arrival of her husband. He and Petra arrived as soon as they could the very next day, and Amy did not look like she had before. Uh, her recently bleached hair had grown significantly exposing inches of her natural colored roots, suggesting that some considerable amount of time had passed for her, more than just a few hours. Her body hair had also grown significantly. Uh, she also had a, a triangular arrangement of marks on her inner thighs and marks on each of her heels. Clearly thinking that this was something extraterrestrial, Keith uh, purchased a copy of the Australian UFOologist, UFOlogist, 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 uh magazine. A foologist. Uh, and the three of them read up on UFOs. He contacted Australian UFO Research Network office number, and he uh, that was mentioned in the magazine. He reached Diane Harrison on Friday, fifth October. Wait, Friday, October fifth, two thousand one. Uh, and for over an hour, he, uh, she listened to the story that Keith, Amy, and Petra had told her. <clears throat> so given the nature of the story and its complexity and the fact that it apparently featured the alleged use of a, quote, solid beam of light, Diane decided to bring on Bill Chalker uh, into the investigation. So Bill was actually scheduled to talk uh, at the Brisbane UFO conference on October 13th. And his topics included solid light cases and the application of science to alien abduction cases. Lucky for him. So, spooky. Very spooky. So Bill spoke with Amy, focusing mainly on the events before and after the claim, uh, claimed onboard experiences. Bill discussed with Amy her general responses and her physical state and her current state of thought on her experiences. That just was a sentence like in english uh so keith wanted to this this is kind of weird this is a red flag to me keith wanted to contact the media promptly but both diane and bill suggested that they think very carefully about the possibility of ramifications of doing so <coughs> excuse keith me keith is fucking up so um da -da 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 -da. so keith seemed to feel that it was important to get the story out as if it wouldn't come out any other way. Um, he just kind of wanted to spill the beans as it was happening, I guess. Uh, so he claimed um, they didn't need to prove their experience to the media, but keep in mind that he didn't exactly witness the experiences. He basically, Petra saw it happen. Amy had the onboard experience. And all Keith really saw was her after and he saw her like hours before you know but he was the one who was trying to like get the story out i guess um so given the possible nature of the event and that uh basically diane and bill decided to undertake the uh the investigation um so keith told them again here is keith taking the reins he told them that the three of them would wait for the investigators to come to mckay and uh, since they were in no apparent hurry to get back to their hometown, which was nine hours away. Uh, and Keith also gave Bill and Diane permission to visit their Gundaya property on the way. So Diane and Bill traveled to Gundaya, arriving at the property just after 10 p.m. Uh, because of the lateness of this hour, they did get Keith's permission again to stay at the home overnight and conduct whatever investigation they needed to do. So this is what Diane Harrison and Bill Chalker had to say. They were like the Scully and Mulder on the case. I bet they were like porking on that couch that Amy got abducted on. They were probably really into that whole <laughs> extraterrestrial thing. Just kidding. That was disrespectful for me to say. But I said it anyway because that's how America is being led by example these days. Anyway, yes. Um, Diane and Bill. So this is their pre preliminary report verbatim it's not that long uh, so this is what they said we undertook extensive investigations at the property and the area police were very helpful our investigation generated many issues and questions which we feel need uh, resolution in order to assist interpretations of these events further extensive investigations were undertaken in mckay focusing in particular uh focusing in particular 
particularly. You can do it. At the area where Amy Rylance returned. Uh, these included attempts to reconstruct the circumstances of Amy's return and so on and so forth on the uh, the site of the location. The BP gas station staff were spoken to and the police looked at surveillance videotape, which may have contained Amy's visit, um, which did contain Amy's visit. And the part of their investigation... Well, it says our, because I'm still reading there. So the part of our investigation also generated many issues and questions um, uh, to measure the certainty of real, of the real nature events. Oh, Jesus. You okay? Yes, I need more wine. (laughs) To measure the... You get what I'm saying, okay? So um, when we contacted the motel where they had been staying the night before, this was their third motel in McKay. Uh, We learned they had apparently already checked out that morning. We left messages on their phones but did not hear back from Keith until early on the afternoon of our second day as we were leaving McKay. Uh, In his mobile call, Keith apologized for not being available but indicated that he had relocated several times to... Uh, unspecified locations after having fled the area. The preliminary reason for this, Keith indicated, was they claimed to have a kind of, quote, men in black experience. In this case, Keith was reporting a pursuit of, uh, a pursuit of their vehicle by a high-powered dark brown four-wheeled truck. The nature of this event apparently frightened Keith, Amy, and Petra, prompting Keith to attempt to lose the vehicle uh, and eventually leave the area. For those of you who don't know, the whole men in black thing is like, basically, if you have an experience with aliens or something, there's men like dressed in black, you can't see their faces, they wear sunglasses and they're robotic and stuff and they like just come after you like the people in It Follows, if you've ever seen that movie. And then they um, shoot you with that thing so you forget, right? I think that's what they did in the movie. They had the little laser beam and the light. They were like, Pssst. yeah. Well, I don't know because I've never seen them. Maybe. You're allowed to sneeze on the podcast, girl. Just let it out. It won't come out. Okay. It's tickling Jeez. my nose. Well, don't yell at me. <laughs> So, uh, before the completion of this preliminary report on the 14th of October, uh, we have heard from Keith again. Uh, we remain hopeful that we will get more direct in more direct contact with us. This affair uh, is both extraordinary and controversial. Many have rushed to judgment, but given its com- complexities in involving dynamics, they use a lot of big words. Why did they do this? Um, <laughs> we have many issues and questions. Again, this is, they're just repeating themselves. There's clearly issues and questions that they need to figure <laughs> out before they can make. I think they're trying to cover their asses in this report. They're just like, this is what they're telling us. It could be fake. There's obviously issues that we need to resolve. Um, so further ki- contact with the Rylances and Petra Heller may help this process. So basically, when they finished this preliminary report, they couldn't get back in contact with them. Um, so, yeah. That's Spooky. that's it. They they never really summed anything up. This was back in two thousand one. You can watch. What was that? I don't know. They know, they know we're talking about them. This always happens. <laughs> it's always happening. I hope you heard that because then some of them, when like the house was settling, we could hear it in the headphones when we were talking about and weird no stuff, and you couldn't hear it when we were doing the playback. Shook. I'm so sure. what do you what do you think about it? I mean. Let me let me just okay. Let me tell. Let me. There's a lot ahead. of um. I feel like loopholes in the story, but I feel like it's because someone didn't want someone to know something. Well, either that, but let me play devil's advocate really quick. Can Don't this do be, that? But oh, I have to. Like, let's just look at it objectively. Let's just take a step back, not have an opinion. All right, whether put your we little believe it or not. Hat on. I cannot do that. You know what it does to my thighs. Uh, okay, so can this be a hoax? Absolutely. So there is news footage you can find on the internet about the burned bush and the broken window and the curtain and all this stuff. Um, And you do see the three of them talking about what happened. And you do see the marks on Amy and you do see that her roots are growing in. Um, uh, So considering the fact that the last time anybody saw any, like, had seen Amy was at 9.15 in their home, she was only seen by Petra and Keith. Essentially... 
they could have lied. She could have been in McKay the whole time. Am I wrong? She could have been in McKay the whole time. And um, they could have just concocted this whole plan for attention, maybe. I don't know, because they really didn't get anything out of it. Um, but they, they could have just, like, given the sketchy information. Yes, you have your hand up. <laughs> Okay, but explain the hair growth and the roots and... I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like, I'm not saying I don't believe it, but she could have just not dyed her hair. She could have just not shaved. She could have just put the marks on her. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying she did. I'm not discrediting her story because I I do believe that these types of things happen, obviously. But for somebody who would look at this as a hoax, this is like where they would be coming from. Um, So she could have been miles away. She could have just rolled around in the mud, pretended she was like disoriented, Um, However, she did take the oath. She's claiming she's not crazy. And after the story, they all kind of just like fell off. And that story of my friend. Yes, which we're going to get to in one second. You're going to love it. You're not going to want to miss this. But really quick, I'm just going to wrap this up because I have a couple more questions about this story, which kind of make it seem shady. Again, not discrediting, just wondering um, why Petra wasn't more verbal. She was the one who saw everything happen. I did see her in a news interview where she seemed really timid and awkward and she didn't speak much English. So maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Also, why did Keith want to take control of the situation? Right. I, I'm getting weird vibes from Keith. Me too. Toxic masculinity. Not coming for you, Keith, but I'm coming for you. So was it because he wanted to be the man in the situation? And he wasn't running anything. He didn't have any type of control over anything because he didn't know anything. He didn't know anything. Because he didn't see anything. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, we could just, we're not coming at you, Keith. We know you're listening. It's okay. I'm just looking at it objectively. I just have some questions that I would like answered. So if anyone can answer, text Specifically me. Keith. Specifically Keith. Odditiespodcast at gmail.com. We're going to have to say that again at the end. Okay. But it's fine. <laughs> But yeah, that is the uh, the abduction of Amy Rylance. I wonder what she's doing right now. Hope she's doing okay. Amy, where are you at, girlfriend? Text us. <laughs> Email us, oddityspodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Funny, haha. Okay, so um, we are going to get into a story um, of a friend of mine, which will remain anonymous. I, I know her. She exists. We're not just saying she's anonymous. She yeah, exists. No, no, if you're no. listening to this, hey, girl. Hey, girl. What if I just like put her on blast? You're like, she will remain anonymous. Hey, Abby. What's right. up, girl? I'm saying. <laughs> her name's not Abby. She's anonymous. Um, so uh, my friend is just like one of us, you know. A hoe. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but just like believes in this kind of stuff and um she had a a crazy thing happen to her so a little backstory about my friend um she would get really 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 bad migraines like um to the point where like she couldn't go out she couldn't do anything so i'm just gonna jump into the story this isn't sarah's story by the way this is just she sarah has a different story about an alien situation but this is just like a side story this is a bonus clip you guys get a bonus clip today bonus okay so um i had her she she told me when it happened but um it was i think it was like three three or five years ago so. three or five just three right or how five. do you jump three or five just, but um you know. so i had her um re um type out the story for me so this is in her words okay She says, so it was a few nights after I left the hospital for an inner ear infection that was throwing off my entire equilibrium, causing dizziness, nauseousness, etc. Couldn't walk, couldn't even eat anything without throwing up. The only medication I was on was the dizziness pill that wasn't helping at all. So the night I'm, so that night I'm laying in bed trying so hard to fall asleep and it felt like my body just wasn't letting me and I was getting so aggravated because I felt so sick and just wanted to sleep. So I'm lying there on my side in the dark and all of a sudden I hear this noise that sounds like a muffled radio coming from somewhere in my room. I'm too scared to move so I'm just laying there trying to figure out what it could be and as I'm laying there it just keeps getting louder. Then out of nowhere a bright light appears in my room as if it bursts through my window and there's gusts of wind without moving. I'm lying on my back. I can't see anything because it's so bright. I'm completely paralyzed and mute. I can't hear anything over that muffled radio sound. All I see are a few shadowy figures standing over me. After a few minutes, everything just stops. The light leaves my bedroom through the window. Everything's quiet. I'm laying on my side again. Immediately after that happened, my dizziness and nauseousness were completely gone. This is the kicker. A few months later, I found a lump in my thigh. I went to three different doctors to figure out what it was. Countless MRIs and ultrasounds, and no one could 
tell me the slightest clue. And then it just disappeared one day. That's crazy. I have goosebumps. Mind you, the lump was a metal rod. <gasps> what? And then you... it just disappeared. No. Wait, how did they know it was a metal rod? That's insane. MRI ultrasound it shows that. What happened to it? It just disappeared. It was just gone? Yeah. They're probably still tracking her. I'm right. sorry if you're listening to this. <laughs> like, Don't say that. That's, that's crazy. I remember you briefly telling me that. Crazy. I'm really shook. I wish something like that would happen to me. Don't say that. Hey, UFOs. Hey, aliens. I need a new cool story to tell people. <laughs> I need something cool for my Tindo, Tinder bio. I need something cool for the internet. Please. <laughs> Okay. No, but that's 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 crazy. My computer just bugged out. Oh, look at that. Crazy stuff. <gasps> Whoa. Hold on. This just hit me. I'm shook. So nothing nothing like that had really happened to I me. I filled your wine. Drink it. Thank you. So, okay. You may think I'm crazy, but that's okay. I, I, Sarah, I don't know if I told you this, but the one night... So basically, I was doing research. And I'm just like fumbling over my words. <sighs> Okay. He's always doing research. When you say, <laughs> when you hear him say, I was doing research, just click off because it's always something terrifying. It's true. Oh my gosh. She used to live with me. So sometimes weird things would happen as I'm researching weird things. So I would not really suggest it just from um, one backstory, backstreet boy fan to another. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. But like the one night, this was. I was doing research on the topic of, I think it was like Elisa Lam or something. It was Elisa Lam. I, that's probably one of my favorite conspiracy theories. Just want to throw that out there. Okay. Yes. But, um, but one night I was driving home from work and it was not too, too dark out. And there was this thing. It looked like a really low plane, but it wasn't shaped like a plane. It was shaped like a, like a oval type thing. And there were two cars in front of me that pulled over onto the side of the road to look at it. So I pulled over onto the side of the road to look at it and it was crazy. And then it just kind of like, it, w it was moving like in a straight line and then it jutted up once. And then it just kind of like started going higher, like a normal plane one. So it could have been a plane. It could have been just like my mind playing tricks on me, but that's what I saw that night. Um, I go to bed I don't think I was abducted by aliens or anything, but I wake up like I, I'm not a sleepwalker. I, I don't I slept walks when I was little, but I haven't done it since. I wake up in my bathroom with the light on, standing up, looking at myself in the mirror. Oh, my God. You told me about this. I hated that. That was so creepy. I have like I weird things happened to me that that entire week. Um, I started getting phone calls. I was with you one of the times it happened. I still have them screenshotted on my phone. I should put them like, uh, oh, I can't because they're phone numbers. Oh. I have literally, I think, like 10 different phone calls from anon like they weren't anonymous calls. They were numbers that were from different places. But anytime I was with someone, the phone call was coming from where they're from. So like not putting you on blast, but Sarah's from Scranton, which is a place in PA. And when I was with her, I got two phone calls from two different places from Scranton, PA. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Yeah. I'm and sure. like that happened 10 different times with 10 different phone numbers. And I didn't pick up. They didn't leave a message. Yeah. Are you going to make me sleep in a room by myself today? I'll die right now. Sure am. <gasps> Isn't that weird though? It could honestly just been like whatever and just like a weird coincidence. But I just thought I would put it out there. You can choose to believe me or not. I have the screenshots on my phone. So try again, sweetie. You can choose to leave me in a room by myself. Mind you guys, I sleep with my cat all the time, so, like, that's, like, my person. I feel like I'm not scared when I sleep in a room with him. Is that weird? What is he going to do if, somebody, if an alien comes in? He will rip the shit out of them. He's just going to swat at them. And then that's they're true. probably going to be distracted by his cuteness because he's real cute. He's so cute. He's such a cute cat. I can't get over it. Oh, RIP to his balls. He just got fixed. Yes, he did. Little boy. <laughs> tbt to our last episode when we were trying to figure out what genitals were <laughs> oh my god we could not figure out we penis balls genitals oh my goodness all right guys so um we're gonna jump into my story which is that what a segue ufos or like i like to call them uf knows right for real 
If you're listening to this podcast, you probably already heard of number one through four, but especially one and two. <gasps> you got multiple ones? I did. Oh, girl. All right. First is Kenneth Arnold, 1947. I leaned forward into the microphone to nod at her. I was <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think many can agree that this is where it all started with UFO sightings. Okay. Um, Kenneth Arnold was a pilot, obviously. I don't know if that's obvious, but... If it's not obvious, I didn't know. I don't know who he is. Oh, okay. That's great. On June 24th, while flying his small aircraft near Mount Rainer in Washington, Kenneth claimed to see nine blue glowing objects flying fast. It estimated the UFOs were flying at 1,700 MPF. I don't know what that actually means. Oh, I'm going to Google it right now so we can pretend we know what we're talking about. And I'm just going to edit this part out and not tell the people I'm Googling it. What is it? MPF? MPF. In a V Oof. formation. Took me to Netflix.com. National Pro Fast Pitch League. What? Women's Pro Softball. Yep. MPF. That's it. It's miles per hour. No, that's my M. MPH is miles per hour. It's MPH. Oh, why am I looking up NPF? Because I think that's what I said. Because oh. I saw the F from the UFO. Oh, God. Yep. Hey, uh, if you're out there, can you pray for us? 1,700 <laughs> miles per hour in a V formation. Some of you will probably argue that these sightings were just other aircrafts, but the military confirmed there were no tests being done in that area. But are we going to believe them? Kenneth... Okay, so before I start this, this is the thing that makes me mad about all of these stories that are similar. Is everyone keeps trying to correct that it was something else. Like, I understand we're not going to say that it was UFOs, but, like, come on, let people, like, But wait, a U- a UFO is an unidentified flying object. Right. So, in all honesty, it's not wrong to call it that. Kenneth described the sightings as a saucer if you skip it across water. Now, imagine what a rock looks like when you skip it across water. It's like oval shaped. What, a, what well, a UFO it, would look like. What they're illustrated to look like. Where did you get the rock from? What do you mean? You just said a rock. Yeah, because that's what a saucer looks like. It's like oval. Rocks aren't all oval. Most of them are. If you skip them across water, it looks like that. Oh, the ones that are worth skipping. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are square. Oh God. They come in all shapes and sizes, and we love all sorts of rocks. Eh. <laughs> It is said that Kenneth was hallucinating or seeing a mirage. That's what they said. They just told him to basically shut up. Stop talking about it. You're crazy. That's what they always do. Right. I'm saying. All right. Second one. It's probably the most famous one. Roswell, 1947. I'm so ready. I love uh, it. Okay. So if you haven't heard of number one, you definitely heard of this one. Based in New Mexico, summer 1947. A rancher named William Mack Brazil noticed weird debris. It's debris. You better put that S on silent again. First the Illinois, now the debris. <laughs> put that S on silent. Debris. What? Okay, in this silence, I'm not editing out because she's just trying to find her place. So come at us. We're just human. In his pastures. You see these uh, tan lines? Yes, come on. Do your story. <laughs> These debris, this debris was metallic rods like the one my friend found in her body. You see that? I don't see it, but I can imagine it. Chunks of plastic and unusual papery scraps. When Brazil reported the wreckage, Roswell Army Aircraft Base came and picked up the materials. Always. They're always, they're always trying to ruin it. Let's just sweep it under the rug. Quick, guys, back to the station. Put it on the rug. Right. Officials eventually said it was only a downed water balloon, weather balloon. Now, have you ever heard of a weather balloon? I no. have. It's actually a thing, Sarah. Oh, damn it's it. Because I haven't. I've never heard of it. So since I haven't heard of it, it's not real. Because <laughs> oh, my Christ. opinion are bust. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> People like you. So it did not take long for researchers to try to convince the world that the wreckage was not extraterrestrial. A man by the name of Ray Santelli released a video in 1950, 1995. 
I don't know where that 50 came from, of an alien dissection, supposedly taking place after the reported wreckage happened. In 2006, Santelli admitted the dissection was fake, but based on actual footage. Later, the wreckage was found to be a top-secret project the military was working on called Project Mogul. Mogul. Damn it. Damn it all. Number three. Lubach Lights. Ooh, hit him with the Lubach. Um, I've never heard of this one, have you? Never. Never. Wait, is this over the highway? Mm, it's in Texas. I'm sure they have highways in Texas. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> they just have dirt roads there, right? Right, yeah. They have dirt roads, sweet tea. All my exes like... live in Texas, you know? Mm. Um, On a summer night in August 1951... Three science professors from Texas Tech were hanging outside in Lubbock. When the three professors looked up, they saw a semicircle of lights flying fast. After this occurrence, there was a flood of reports reporting the same thing, a semicircle of lights. There's a picture of a semicircle of lights captured by Carl J. Hart, featured in magazine and Time magazine. As always, the event was quickly shut down by the Project Blue Book investiga- investigation. Listen, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. That's just your eyes playing a trick on you. Everyone's at the same time. It's crazy so it because real? this isn't the first time Project Blue Book came and investigated something and then tried to rule it as non-extraterrestrial. I'll get to that next. Okay. Um, Project Blue Book came to the conclusion that the lights were birds that reflected off the luminescence from street lights oh get real i'm saying like you guys Cut ruined everything come on come on project blue book kelly blue book let me get a good deal that. on my hyundai elantra 2013 rock on <laughs> i need to get my car inspected that reminds me leland 1957 much like the scene from the film, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Have you ever seen it? I have seen it, yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, this UFO sighting in Cleveland, Texas made electronics in a car go crazy. <gasps> whoop, whoop. In 1957, dozens of citizens of Leland reported seeing a rocket-like figure with strange lights that interfered with vehicles. Police thought the reports were a hoax, even after seeing for themselves the strange occurrences with the lights. <laughs> Always. <laughs> it's not real guys it's not actually happening we're crazy too project blue book again said it was an electrical storm and ball lighting causing the lights and malfunctions there was no reported thunderstorms in the area that night clearly something was going on so as you can see project blue book <gasps> was that it was yep. that one? Oh. so as you can see project blue book you better watch what you say it's great it's great we're gonna follow you on twitter Thanks for listening. We don't believe in UFOs, and uh, please don't come for us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I wish we had, like, an open forum where we could discuss with our listeners. Like, Yeah, it's hard with the podcast, but, I mean, you could email us if you guys have any stories. I love that your friend has that story because yes. the, only, the only UFO type story I have is the one that happened to me, and that was this year. If it it was either this year or the end of last year. I think right. it might have been the end of last year. I think it was. Because it was before the John Bonet Ramsey um, Love anniversary. That. So it was probably in, by this time last year, actually. Maybe like October. Um, UFOs clearly are real. But extraterrestrial beings, they have to be. Think about how massive the, the universe is. Right. You're going to tell me that this thing just, like, doesn't exist? I mean, they might not be. I know that there's, like, uh, the grays is what people refer to a lot. And it's, like, the typical, like, Those are the bad ones. I don't think they're the bad ones. Well, there's, are they bad? There's ones that are bad and there's ones that are good. I think the grays are the bad ones. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going by their looks. I think we should judge them by their character. But the grays are like the ones that are. They, I can't take you seriously without one nail painted. They have like. <laughs> they oh have my god! Like, it's this middle finger painted black. I'm dead. They have like the um the oval eyes that look kind of like biscotti, um and like the two slits from the nose and like a small mouth. Like you you know what I'm looking. You know what the I'm talking about. The typical alien face. Typical alien face. Like yeah. the emoji. That's yes, great. Yes 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 exactly. I could have just said that and it, you just let me go ahead and go off on that. little Yeah, finger. you already know. I love it when you go off. Whoop, whoop. 
oh, if there's any like UFOs or if there's any extraterrestrial beings who are listening to this and you're picking up this frequency somehow, um, can you just email us at oddityspodcast at gmail.com? Send us a sign. Send us a sign. Maybe, okay, like, let's not like invite them into our houses like that because like then things start yeah, getting Yeah, I weird. have to sleep alone. You don't. But um, have you ever had any like personal encounters? No. No, stuff like that doesn't happen to me. I literally, until last year at the end of the summer when I, and I don't even know if that's an encounter. It could just be me in my head, but I did have a very, 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 very weird week that week. Um, I'm not even going into the details. Say very one more time. Very. (laughs) I'm not even going into all the details that I have, but on my phone, in my notes, I have, I listed the date, the times of all the weird stuff that happened to me. And it was for, I think, nine days straight. Did you hear that? Yes. What's moving upstairs? See? Oh, I think Duck just took like a suicide plunge into the pond. Amazing. (laughs) The turtles. Um, I wish I was an alien. Do you want to move to the moon? Yeah, please. Get me out of here. This world is scary. Hey, guys. We're moving to the moon. Um, Just DM us or email us at oddityspodcast.com. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we'll be leaving promptly on February 18th, my birthday, around noon o'clock. Um, meet us in Texas at the highway. Yeah, a lot of things happen in Texas. Hi, guys. This is John and Sarah from the future. It's me. We just wanted to let you know that we pre-record these episodes. These are not recorded in real time. Yeah. So when we were actually talking here about Texas, it was before the hurricane had happened. And we just want to say that our thoughts are going out to those affected yes, friends, our families. Yes, to the families. Yes. It is awful what is happening. It's like an ocean. Yeah. So... Uh, We just wanted to put that out there because we do talk about Texas in this next part and we don't want people to think that we don't care. Yeah, because we didn't say anything about the hurricane. So we we care and our thoughts are with you. Thank you. Texas is a big state. Yeah, it's the biggest, right? um, Is it the biggest? It was. It was until California came in and he was like, guess what? <laughs> guess what? I'm here. No, I think it goes California and then Texas. I don't know because there, there's property wise and then there's probably population wise. I feel like California probably has a lot more people. Rhode Island is really small. Thanks for that tip. You're just like driving through Rhode Island for 10 minutes. Just Thanks for visiting Rhode Island. Look around. It's small. <laughs> Uh, size doesn't matter, our Rhode Island listeners. You guys are great. Oh. <laughs> Aliens are real. Do you have your fun fact? Yeah. You're going to pull one out of your... Should I say mine first so you have time to look it up on your phone? Yep. Okay. <laughs> this is a distraction. Okay, so this is my fun fact. Um, Every human being starts out as an asshole. E. It's the first part of the body that's formed in the womb. I guess Donald Trump's just never finished forming love that <clears throat> in this awkward silence it's because somebody didn't find a fun fact stop it. australia has over ten thousand beaches that was the first one that came up on google you could visit a new <laughs> beach every day for 27 years you better hit him with the promo girl what's your promo code so i can stay at these beaches for 50 percent one 800 you're an asshole <laughs> I was an asshole, but I outgrew that stage. The directors of the film Despicable Me actually wrote their own language for the Minions called Minionese. Right. It's a it's between Japanese and uh, Portuguese. The mayor of Alaskan town, Tal- Talkinta, is called Stubbs and has been mayor of the town since July 1997. Stubbs is a cat. What? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. In Alaska? Yes. The mayor of Alaska? Is a cat. Is a cat? Uh-huh. A town called Tolkna. Oh. Look, I'm looking. States don't have mayors, do they? You have governors. Hey, guys, we're a valid source of information. Drink. States don't have mayors, right? It's a town. Ta- like. Viagra, when dissolved in water, can make <laughs> cut flowers stay erect for up to a week longer than they usually would. Try it. That's an interesting, I wonder. You should try it. <laughs> Her face just lit up like a goddamn Christmas tree. Or a menorah, whatever you Yeah, prefer. if you put Viagra in the Christmas tree water, maybe it'll stay alive longer. I have a fake tree. 
I know, because you're allergic, right? It also matches my fake personality. And you my heard fake it here. boobs. What? Did you hear that? That was you sitting back in the chair. We made these chairs from Ikea. We may or may not have been drinking that night. And when we, when we made the table, we flipped over the kitchen table and uh, two nails fell out. Well, they were screws. Well, they were supposed to be screws. Now they're in the garbage. Garbage. So, uh, yeah, if you hear creakiness, that's uh, that's my chair. That one's Sarah's. <laughs> this shit's about to break. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for listening to us. Basically, mumble. Again, yeah, mumble. Go on about um, things. F- uh, follow us on Instagram. We are at Esoteric Oddities. Um, also, email us oddityspodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, Esoteric Oddity. O D D I T I E. Not Y, it's I E. Because we're unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> Also, um, if you're listening to us on iTunes, rate us if you could. That Please. would be awesome. Like us if you're listening to us on SoundCloud. We're on a bunch of different websites that I had never even heard of before. Right. Um, I'm going to, once upon a time, drop a pic of my cat so you guys can see how cute he is. Yes. Put it, put it on the IG. Follow us on Instagram. That's honestly where we're most active. Yeah. And Facebook. Oh, yes. And Facebook. Find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Esoteric Oddities. Um. Yeah, we do post a bunch of articles and stuff that basically Facebook and uh, Instagram, Instagram are like our are, thing. Mm-hmm, it's kind of our thing. Maybe you've heard of it. MySpace.com. Ever heard of it? Ever heard of it? I miss MySpace where you can like pick your song. That was my favorite thing. Oh, my God. I and wonder- the layout. We've been coding things for years. That used to be my shit. I used to always code. And Zanga, too. I still love Zanga. I wonder what my MySpace song is. Probably nothing. Mm. They probably took it down. I feel like, yeah, I couldn't even put my, because I feel like last time I logged in was like 2008. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Have a great day and believe in yourselves and uh, drink water, eat your vegetables. Um, Stay hydrated with liquor. You know what? You heard it here. Bye.